ball for Spink. He's in the box. Back for Cole. Cole square. Here's a chance for Smith. Smith, yes, it's there. Spink, Cole, Smith. Smith doing the damage. 1-0. Welcome to the Lions Den, the official Preston Lions Club show, coming to you live on FNR Football Nation Radio. This time over Zoom, I'm up in Canberra, but it was important that we still got on air this week because it is the end of an era. President Zakarevsky is stepping down after eight glorious years at the helm. Zach, welcome. Thank you, Josh. Lovely to be here, mates. Now, I'm sure everybody's seen the announcement on the socials and, you know, you've detailed the reasons for uh, for uh, your decision to step down. But um, do you want to, if anyone missed that, give a, a little uh, window into into the, what's gone on over the past couple of weeks? Yeah, sure. Thank you, Josh. Um, look, I mean, we, uh, as, you, as you rightly said, uh, we've had as a group uh, eight fantastic years together. Uh, a number of the, the current executive committee have, have been uh, with me on that journey for, for that long. Uh, some, in fact, have actually been running a little bit longer than that. So, um, look, I, I've got to a point where uh, because of, uh, and I think I said in my statement, they use the words uh, professional and, and personal reasons, it's got to a stage where it's uh, it's obviously predominantly impacting on my work. Um, it's uh, become a, a second job, this, uh, this football club of ours, and... Um, whilst I've clearly thoroughly enjoyed um, the journey um, and then, you know, I wouldn't do anything different uh, over that journey. Um, it's got to a point where I, uh, I do need to make that call and, and have made that call. Um, but I guess, you know, the, the key uh, the key message I'd, I'd like people to, to really take away from this is that, um, one, it's been, it's been a wonderful journey for, for our club for a number of years and, uh, you know, many uh, know... Um, the sordid history of the club, uh, you know, we're, we're going to celebrate next year. And I say we, genuinely, we will celebrate our 75th anniversary next year. And so, you know, we've uh, seen some wonderful highs and, and some lows, sadly, over that journey. And, and in the last, uh, let's say, decade or so, um, when the club, uh, you know, was uh, was perhaps almost bankrupt, um, a number of wonderful people obviously stepped in to, to deal with that uh, that issue and, uh, and try and resurrect the club from... Um, some deep dark mud that was in, um, and so uh, from uh, from my journey as a as a board member on um, back then uh, FFV, I spent nearly uh, nearly four years on the board there and had a terrific insight into what uh, what football outside of clubland is is like. Um, got to meet some some terrific people. Uh, got to understand, I think, the uh, the administration of the game to some extent. Um, and uh, from there, obviously, came across to, to Preston um, just on eight years ago, um, and it's been a superb ride since then. Um, you know that that journey has taken us uh, from uh, you know pretty, um, I'll call them humble beginnings um, <laughs> during that period, where uh, we probably had uh, sadly left. Uh, you know, I think it was about thirty-five kids, um, juniors at the time. There's only three teams left uh, the the year we sort of came in. Um, and our first focus was really uh, around around juniors. We obviously had always followed the uh, the senior men's team, who at the time were um, were in state one, um, and uh, it was uh, it was a battle. We had uh, next to nothing in the way of infrastructure. Um, I recall we had two half pitches of lighting, and these days we got four fully deep, wonderful pitches, thanks uh, obviously to the city of Darabin. And so, you know, over that journey, uh, our aim is really to been uh, has been about restoring hope. Um, and trust and a reputation that uh, as a group of people that um, people can come back to the club to enjoy some of the things we enjoyed as, as kids um, following uh, this this proud club of ours um, yeah and uh, and since you know making this decision um, and sort of breaking the news to, to my family um, it's fair to say that there was a fair sense of relief on their uh, on their faces um, and you know they 
they've just given me absolutely unconditional supports to uh, to carry out this passion um, that, that we all have for the club. Uh, you know, and I, I was saying to a couple of people at training last night as I was speaking to, you know, the senior men's and women's teams and our uh, 19s and 21s um, players and coaches, I said, look, um, it's it's very difficult once you've been bitten by this Preston bug, it's very difficult to actually leave. And so, you know, my uh, my decision uh, doesn't mean I'm walking away from the club. Um, my uh, intention is to clearly support Dave, uh, David Sudkowski, who's been uh, appointed as our new um, president, um, formerly obviously vice president uh, over the last couple of years. Um, our uh, wonderful executive committee will obviously continue in their uh, respective roles um, with some tweaks. Um, we, uh, as, as a group uh, on Monday night, um, appointed Pina Molika and Danny Grievski um, as vice presidents, so co-vice presidents, uh, if you want to use that term, um, and elevated uh, Dorbert Timolkovsky, who's been our treasurer up until now, um, elevated his role to uh, the role of chief financial officer, which is uh, just the recognition of the wonderful uh, work and the stewardship that uh, uh, he's provided um, and the governance he's provided our, our wonderful club over, over many years. In fact, he joined with me um, that, uh, that fateful evening uh, at an AGM eight years ago. Um, so let's rewind to that. Let's rewind that. Cause you always speak in terms of the collective. I know the supporters love you for it, but we, we rarely get an insight sort of behind the scenes into the actual personal experience of, of coming on board. I mean, how on earth did they rope you into this, this crazy club? <laughs> um, it, look, it's a, it's a really good question. How they wrote me. I, I don't think anyone wrote me in. I mean, there was, there was obviously discussions. Um, I, um, funny enough, my young fellow who, you know, who's 19 these days, um, uh, we'd just come across to the club, I think, uh, two years prior to me joining the committee. Um, and, uh, we were at Bandura for the best part of five years. I mean, um, sadly when, uh, whenever my son was, uh, my old Aussie, he was, uh, five or six, we came across to Preston to see what, uh, what was happening with the, you know, mini ruse program at the time. And, and sadly, at the time, not a great deal was happening for, for kids that age. And so, you know, we chose obviously to go to a club that where they had kids and could he could participate. And we made a call that, um, and obviously in that sort of period, the club uh, was going through some pretty difficult times and some wonderful people uh, did step up to, um, you know, and let's not beat around the bush to, to save the club. I mean, it was, it was ready to put the... To padlock the padlock on the front gates, and um, you know it was very difficult to deal with a you know let's say round numbers two hundred fifty thousand dollar debt that um, some wonderful people then over a number of years dealt with, um, and first and foremost got the club back onto a stable footing um, financially, and that was that was critical. Um, there was, uh, and whilst I was um, there with my son for that, the couple of years, and you know, I, I couldn't help myself by getting involved in whatever activities were, were required. Um, in fact, our, our um, uh, we were laughing the other day our under the 19s coach, Jufko Kalevsky, who I know you've inter interviewed on this program. He um, he was appointed our uh, juniors coordinator um, at the time, and and I've known Jufko for uh, for a very long time and his family. And, uh, and set out, obviously, in the background, helping him as, as much as I could because I was obviously present there at, uh, at the juniors training and games, etc. So um, a few of us uh, you know, sort of focused a little bit on, on the juniors. And, and it definitely needed a little bit of focus because, uh, as I say, we had, had very little left in terms of numbers and, and quality at the time. And over a number of years, uh, uh, we were able to obviously to get the numbers up to, you know, close on 300. And we're probably not far off that number now. So a really thriving Mini Roos and Juniors program, including our sort of Lion Cubs, where we have, you know, almost 50, 50 ki little kids between the age of four and six running around. And, and you know, what, a, what a sight that is. It's, it's absolutely superb to see kids running around the grounds. Um, and so um, the club at the time, uh, and I think probably through my brother initially and, and a number of others who I knew, um, kept poking and prodding, Zach, um, you know, what the hell are you doing on the Federation board? Why are you wasting your time there? Um, you know, what, what are you going to achieve? I said, look, I'm just going through my own journey at the moment of learning and, and hopefully I can bring some of those skills uh, to, uh, to Preston one day. And, and I didn't make a commitment, but I always knew because of my connection as a child. I mean, our, our late father had uh, obviously taken us and our uncles had taken us to games over, over many moons. And, and it's, it's, it's that connection, I think, that... Um, 
for many of us, uh, drove us back to the club. And um, I guess I was in a position in my life where um, work was pretty stable. I was, I was volunteering with the Federation on the board. Um, you know, I said that uh, here's a wonderful opportunity now to join a, a, a terrific group of people to uh, to bring this club back to something that it should be. Um, and that's, that's how the journey started. How did you convince you know, sponsors to come on board, people to take on positions, uh, parents to send their kids to the club uh, when, you know, everyone could see from the outside that it looked like it was on life support at that time. Um, look, it was it was challenging. And look, I, uh, I'll confess, I, I don't take credit for uh, particularly the, the sponsorship work that was done. And, sure. um, you know, a, a shout out to uh, to, to Danny Rieski, my, my brother, who, um, and, and, you know, David Svetkovsky and others will tell the story of, of him knocking on doors and uh, asking people for money early days. And, and most people didn't want a bar of it at the time, um, knowing that the club was uh, in a pretty difficult spot. Um, uh, again, through persistence, uh, you know, he, he's a persistent bugger, um, through persistence and, uh, and then, you know, some other people obviously uh, starting to do some other terrific things around the club. Um, you know, we, we set out early days to try and... Um, develop a product of some sort and, and start to change the culture, making it a, a welcoming culture for, for anyone that actually wanted to come to the club, regardless of your background, your heritage, your race, your religion. Um, and, and that was, I think, something that, uh, and until today, I'm extremely proud of um, as a club that, um, you know, we, uh, we've engaged extremely well with our local community and, and, you know, the demographic clearly of the community has changed over many years. Um, and uh, we're so proud that we can actually represent our local community, and and that's something we work extremely hard on with uh, with the city of Durban, particularly. So, the club was stuck with it from a senior men's perspective in in state league one for so so long, and you know it's such a hard league to get out of. Uh, how much of a, a role do you play in trying to to rebuild the senior men's team? The coaching appointments we've had several coaches come in over the years yeah. until until Louis finally took the reins more more long term. What was that kind of turbulent ride like? Look, it was challenging. You know, I often say to people, none of us go to president school, right? So um, uh, when uh, that year, in fact, when I uh, and a number of others were appointed as as committee members, you know, at the AGM. Uh, we had a, you know, for the first time in probably many years, had a democratic process that we went through and it was terrific. So everyone's really excited to, to join the committee. And, and the first committee meeting we had, you know, so I'm sitting down with the with the treasurer and uh, and uh, I think the secretary and said, well, okay, well, guys, what's what's the, the arrangements? And obviously under our constitution, the committee elect uh, who's going to do whatever role in, uh, in, in, uh, in the committee. And, uh, and the first thing they said to me, well, we just assume you're coming to be the president. Um, I said, well, okay, all right, <laughs> fair enough. So um, <laughs> uh, off we went and, and took that on. And um, whilst, you know, uh, we'd already done a little bit of work in the juniors uh, program. Um, I mean, we had a, a women's program at the time, which uh, was, it's probably fair to say it was struggling, wasn't perhaps getting the, uh, the attention and, and energy it, uh, it deserved. Um, and then from a men's perspective, and we've always said, and I often joke with Louis, even these days, I said, whilst you guys think you're, you're really important, and I recognise, you know, our men's program is our flagship team that most of our supporters and sponsors and others support. Um, I did say to him at the time, and, and say even these days, um, we do have, you know, almost 20 odd teams that we've got to look after and make sure we deliver a product to, um, you know, there's kids and there's parents who, who are paying, um, you know, reasonable money to, uh, to, to receive uh, tuition and, uh, and and coaching and 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 some sort of enjoyment because you know without that enjoyment you know we're all wasting our time um, and so we set out obviously through uh, your spot on we uh, I think we went through uh, two coaches um, in my time before we appointed Louis um, yes obviously some difficult conversations in uh, in asking people to to move on but. You know, the reality is um, senior men's football is is a results driven business and. Um, what I learned very, very quickly uh, when I joined the club is um, there was no mercy from our supporters, from from others around uh, both the, the inner sanctum and, and perhaps those uh, external to uh, to that inner sanctum. Um, there were clear expectations. You know, he was a proud club that was on its knees and it was starting to to get back up. Um, and um, there was uh, there was this expectation um, that we had to we had to win, we had to get out of state one. Um, we uh, we obviously weren't in the first group 
of clubs that uh, fell into, and I say literally fell into the uh, the NPL structure. Um, and, uh, you know, I think uh, sadly at the time, Preston perhaps just wasn't quite ready to uh, to enter that field. Um, clearly we're there now. And, uh, and I think by being a little bit patient, um, by being able to set up uh, a lot of the structures, a lot of the governance and, and the, the back of house functions that are required, um, it's, uh, I think it's held us in really good stead. We've, we've, uh, we've run a steady race. Um, we haven't sought to throw ridiculous money around. Um, we've been uh, consistent uh, with the way we've approached it. And I've often said, you know, along the journey to people, um, what I see these days of the club and many others see, I think, the same thing. Um, what might have been perhaps a social club back, uh, you know, a little while back, these days is run as a business. And, um, you know, many of us who uh, who came to the club, uh, you know, with professional backgrounds, we, we always said, if we can't bring our professional skill set to, to the club, then, then we're all in trouble. Um, and so um, having, you know, a couple of... Uh, Near uh, near misses to actually get promoted out of state one. Um, I think it must have been early days. Um, it's probably four and a half years ago now, where um, I knocked on uh, not literally, but uh, gave Louis a phone call and said, "Louis." Um, and mind you, I'd only met Louis once. Um, I think we we gone up to a, a Massa Cup competition up in Sydney um, uh, one year prior to that. Um, in fact, it might have been the the, the January before uh, we appointed Louis. Uh, I think he, he came on board, uh, must have been uh, towards uh, the end of April. It was early on in the season. We clearly saw things weren't going particularly well. And uh, um, I was persistent. Uh, Louis, uh, I think, was down the coast somewhere with his family. And uh, I called him one Saturday night, or Sunday night, in fact. Um, and uh, whilst we had a quick conversation, he, he sounded like he was in retirement mode at the time, having uh, obviously left... Hume uh, City, not uh, not long earlier, um, but I was persistent. I followed him up the following day, and I said, "Look, uh, just just hear me out. And I'll, I'll tell you what we're trying to do as as a club, as a group. Uh, there's a number of us who are reasonably new to the club, uh, and let me talk to you a little bit about uh, our vision for the club. Um, and that's that's how how the most current journey started uh, with Louis coming uh, coming on board as a as a head coach, um, and clearly. You know, everyone can see uh, now that um, that for us was a uh, a turning point as a club. Um, not only to to create um, some stability um, with some bringing some good people. Um, Lou is a good football person. He's obviously well renowned. Um, had a fantastic history with uh, with Hume City. Um, you know, great pedigree as as a coach and and was well sought after at the time and. Uh, when we uh, appointed him in, uh, you know, in that period, it was clear that, um, well, I don't think he was telling me stories at the time, um, and we subsequently discussed this, that Preston was the only club he was going to come to. And uh, he was just waiting on the, that knock on the door, which, uh, which came and um, I went to visit him at his place and we, uh, uh, he heard me out and, and we shook hands and said, um, Let's get cracking. And um, I think you've made probably mention of this. Um, his first appearance uh, as a senior coach for us was in an FFA Cup tie against North Sunshine. And uh, he turned up to the ground on the, I think it must have been a Tuesday evening. Um, he, he didn't know what to expect, and uh, but he, he was shell-shocked with, with what he saw. Um, we'd had a lot of players at the time who were, you know, underdone and, uh, he's pulling players from everywhere just to get a squad together. We get on a bus to go to uh, to Dandenong Thunder to play the game, and mm -hmm. what an epic game that was! And, and we're a little bit unlucky to to uh, to not get the chocolates that evening. Um, and that was his baptism of fire, so to speak, with uh, with Preston. Um, and it's been a terrific journey, obviously, ever since. Is there a moment that stands out to you? I know. We like to, you know, especially in this media game, pitch, pitch things as, as as big dramatic moments rather than long, slow processes. But is there is there any particular memory that stands out to you when you thought, yeah, we're actually onto a good thing here. Like we're making the right calls. The club is is on the right track. Be it a, a senior match with a huge crowd, be it you know uh, a junior training session with loads of kids present, something like that. Um, look, so, sorry to disappoint you, Josh. Uh, <laughs> You media folks, uh, you do try and look for that uh, that one story, right? But I, I don't think there was one one moment. I mean, it took 
um, a slow burn for us to, to get, as I said, those structures and, and to bring good people around the, around the club. And those external to, uh, to the club, we're slowly starting to see a change. And um, that hope was slowly being restored, um, that confidence, that, that trust. And we'd go to, you know, in the, in the early years, we'd go to an AGM and it was, it was an open book. Um, I mean, some of our members had never seen that for, uh, for many moons. And so um, these people knew that we were serious about what we're trying to do as a club. Um, you know, we sat down and, and um, with a number of, you know, obviously our committee members and, um, and, and sponsors and others who were really close to, to the club and started to formulate some plans. And, um, you know, we, we set out to, to formulate a, a five-year strategy, which um, at the time is probably unheard of for, for the club. So if you want that, uh, that one moment, it's really probably around that time, early days, uh, maybe the first couple of years of, uh, of my tenure, where we said um, two or three years, I think it must have been, um, we, we seriously need to formulate a plan. I mean, we've got ourselves out of, uh, out of the mire. Um, we need to formulate that plan and, and have, have a roadmap for, for us to work towards. Um, and we did that, um, and it's, you know, the majority of that was around you know, getting good people around the club, particularly around the football department, um, getting uh, access to, to improved facilities. I mean, as I said earlier, we had uh, some pretty ordinary facilities early days. Um, and these days, you know, we're, we're probably the envy of many clubs uh, in this state where um, you know, we've got access to four pitches, um, you know, fully lit. Um, you can train whenever you want. Uh, on them, yes, uh, you know, from time to time during winter, people complain that, you know, they're wet and soft and boggy. I mean, it's a winter sport, let's remember. Um, and uh, from that journey, as we started to tick off a lot of these, and that included some of the financial um, KPIs we'd set for ourselves, uh, which was really critical to, uh, to that stability and to that growth, um, people would then uh, could see what was happening around the club. And uh, as, as the years have gone on, that, that level of confidence, you know, with things like um, improved social media, um, with a more professional presence, uh, I mean, I think we realised a few years ago that you know, the, the use of social media is fundamental to our success as a club. You know, many of our supporters, would, uh, would uh, particularly some of the older ones, would rely on uh, news through the, uh, through the Macedonian papers on a weekly basis that would come out and you'd have, you know, a couple of pages on Preston and some of the other clubs and... I'm not sure we were quite getting to the masses um, with our messaging. So we didn't spend a lot of time uh, in the Macedonian newspaper, although we still have a wonderful relationship uh, with them these days. Um, we looked to other means, um, you know, social media and, and David uh, uh, Svetkovsky, who came on board, um, you know, not in an official capacity, um, was really keen to work with us on uh, improving our image and our brand. And, uh, and, and we've done that obviously ever since. And, um, uh, we've tried to demonstrate uh, that we are a professional club, um, you know, engaging with our key stakeholders like council and, and the federation. And, you know, you talk to people now around the federation and, and those sorts of circles, um, we, we've become one of their model clubs. I'm not saying the model club, but we've become one of their model clubs, um, a, a model that, that embraces diversity, a model that embraces football and um, the interest of the game as well as the interest of the club, um, and, and one where... Um, we have people who uh, who do the right thing um, by the game, by by our club. Um, you know, particularly with respect to behaviour and expectations. Um, you know, there are codes of conduct in place for for good reason. Um, and we've uh, we've been pretty firm on um, on a lot of those things in, in recent years, particularly. Um, and you know, I, I have to say, and particularly this season, as we've started to see some of our crowds um, flood back to to our club. Um, the you know the the atmosphere the uh, the behaviour of uh, you know the vast majority of our supporters has, has been just superb, and um, you know we we often say as a committee to and we've got you know great engagement with our supporter groups we we often say to them you know guys if uh, if you want us to play in uh, state four or five then you know you can behave inappropriately because that catches up with us very quickly we've had sadly uh, you know a tarnished part of our history uh, because of that sort of inappropriate behaviour. Um, let's move forward from that. It's a different time. Let's uh, let's support our players. Let's support our coaches, um, and let's support the club because ultimately the club, as I said in my statement today, the club is always bigger than any of us as individuals. Um, you know, we're we're stewards for a for a particular period of time. Um, all of us 
um, you know, I can safely say, you know, particularly this this group of uh, committee, um, executive committee at the moment, because um, I work so closely with them, all of them are here for for the club. No, no one has any self interest. No one's got any ego. They're here for the success of the club and um, and our local community. And uh, you know, you, you just got to take your hat off to people like that who who sacrifice, like uh, like many of us have sacrifice their own lives um, and put a hold other things they might be planning um, to uh, to be great uh, uh, contributors to, as I said, the club and the community. I, I think the, the key theme in all this is the rehabilitation of the club's reputation. I mean, uh, it's so paramount to, you know, all the future success and the opportunities that the club is going to have is, is the outside view in. And especially, you know, with these few years where the club was kind of in the doldrums and out of sight, out of mind, everyone, you know, viewed it as this fallen giant, you know, having that pristine reputation and, and you know, seeing these huge crowds turn up and, and provide wonderful support, especially some of the games towards the start of this season, has really made, I think, the rest of Victorian and Australian football sit up and take notice again. Look, and, um, you know, we, we're probably a little bit so, somewhat surprised early days, um, Josh, that um, we got that response. I mean, we um, always said towards the back end of, uh, well, it must have been 19, and then obviously uh, the COVID interrupted year, that we um, we thought uh, we were going to troll Friday nights and see how that how that went. And look, if it didn't, we'd go back to our traditional Sunday afternoon kickoff. Um, and once the lights, uh, obviously, were made available, and, and again, you know, just a, a huge thank you to the city of Darabin um, for their wonderful support, improving, um, you know, the, the infrastructure at, at BT Connor Reserve or Jenna Steel Stadium, as we call it these days. Um, that's, you know, that, the, the new fencing, you know, I often used to say um, we finally closed down you know, the part of Pentridge Prison um, with, the, uh, with the ridiculous fencing we had for, for that many decades. And, you know, when you give people a... Um, uh, a, a vantage point where they can actually enjoy the football from wherever they're sitting over, you know, a normal fence. Um, you know, you have, uh, you know, sadly we haven't been able to uh, fire up a new scoreboard, but uh, that that'll come uh, in, in due course as well. Um, and then you have, uh, you know, this this atmosphere under lights. And you know, I, ju I just remember kicking off the season against Melbourne City. But w w what a buzz and what a day it was! What a day! What a night! Um, you know. We couldn't have scripted it any better. Um, just magnificent weather for us. Um, obviously, to get a, a result like that, you know, towards the end of a game, you know, against Melbourne City, um, and whilst we appreciate, uh, uh, you know, some people might say, oh, you know, it's their academy side. They're a good bunch of young players. They're uh, they're they're the pick of the crop, uh, you know, amongst the three teams that uh, that are playing in our uh, competition. So we always knew it was going to be difficult. And when you see that, and you see the response. Um, we're probably a little bit overwhelmed early days uh, in the first first few games, and we, I think we got into a rhythm pretty quickly, particularly from a sort of catering perspective. Um, you know, the grounds and, and everything else worked well, and the, just the noise and the colour was just—it was mind blowing. It was superb, and you know, and then when you see in, in subsequent weeks, um, you've got uh, you know you've got young kids, uh, you know, teenagers turning up. Many, many of them probably knew nothing about Preston. And, you know, I sort of reflect on some of this. Uh, my youngest daughter, um, we, we, you know, sort of talk, uh, you know, over dinner and she'd say, Dad, she, it's, it's amazing. We're starting to talk about Preston on a Wednesday and a Thursday, and that's not me talking about them. There's this kids around, kids around the school talking about Preston on a Thursday. Are you going to Preston on Friday night? And that, that for me, is a reflection of, um, you know, this... Uh, this concept that it's and you know this is not just about the football purists who are coming to our games now. It's yes, there, there are plenty of you know um, traditional Preston people who are, who are coming back and who have you know uh, stayed the course with us over many years through thick and thin. But there's this new crop of uh, of kids and parents uh, who are coming along and teenagers, you know, just coming out for for a night out. Um, and what a fantastic atmosphere! You know that noise and colour. There's, you know, let's let's be real. There's not too many other clubs, uh, not too many other games in Victoria. You can actually see that. And so, um, when you reflect on that and you say, well, why why have we been successful this year? Um, you know, there's some of the factors. Now, let's also not kid ourselves. The fact that we've had a uh, a pretty decent result or decent results on the park clearly helps. 
Um, and the fact that we're sitting top right now, um, you know, let's not uh, be delusional about the fact that uh, people do want to follow a team that's successful. Um, and, you know, it's just generated so much excitement. And, you know, we've been thrilled to, to be able to offer this sort of product to, um, to our supporters and those that want to come and, uh, come and enjoy themselves on a Friday night. Are you excited to be able to relax a little bit and enjoy these games as a fan a little bit more without your president's hat on, without having a million things in the back of your mind to organise and, and stress about? I mean, I'm sure the emotions are still, you know, just as strong. Otherwise, you wouldn't have stayed in this position for, for so long or even come back in the first place. But, I mean, are you excited to be able to just sort of, uh, you know, drink it all in on a match day? Look, you probably won't see me rolling around getting pissed on a, on a match day. Let's, let's be real. <laughs> but, um, look, it's it's fair to say, um, you know, some of the burden clearly will will be lifted. And, and that's not to say uh, I'm just going to go and sit in a corner somewhere. I'm sure, you know, my colleagues will, uh, will want me to sort of help around with uh, with various bits and pieces. But there'll be um, there'll be a time where I can perhaps, uh, whether it be in the grandstand, whether it be in the other side on the uh, on on the park benches, uh, underneath the commentary box, perhaps uh, or nearby, um, go and sit down and have a quiet beer, um, have a chin wag with with someone, and actually sit down and enjoy some football, as opposed to. Um, uh, being, um, you know, the, uh, the the private eye and, and keeping an eye on absolutely everything that's uh, that's going on, on around the ground, depending on who our visitors were, uh, paying more attention than than other games, um, just to ensure that uh, we keep our brand and our reputation intact, uh, and that everyone really enjoys um, that environment that that they should be able to enjoy with the, with some terrific food. Um, some terrific drink and, and and some great football. I mean, that's what it's about. Um, and for people to feel comfortable, they can come to these sorts of environments and to our club to uh, to feel that uh, that energy and that excitement. So well, you know, Spikovsky's still keeping you on as head of security, right? You're not getting <laughs> off that easy. We've got to find something for you to do. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so he uh, he did say that to me last night. I looked at, <laughs> I'm uh, I'm not appropriately qualified uh, for that, mate. Um, and. Uh, so I might, might give that a miss. We, we have a, a terrific firm, Lion Security, who look after us, and uh, I'm sure they'll continue to do that. Um, and I'll continue to uh, uh, to mingle with people who I've, um, you know, I've, I've formed some really good friendships with and good relationships with. Um, you know, I'm, I'm one who, uh, as you can probably tell, can talk underwater. So I, I don't mind having a chin wag with, uh, with anyone um, that comes up to me at the ground or I go up to at the ground. Um, because you know we, we're all there for the same reason. We we want our club to be successful, um, and that's you know I've always said the social aspect of of being involved in football clubs is sometimes uh, equally or, or more important than uh, than the actual football. So what's the way forward then? What's the plan? Well, that, that's what everyone wants to know. What's going to happen? Who's taking over? What's the the five year transition? We've got all this new infrastructure under construction at Jenna Steel Stadium. Uh, you've got uh, people inheriting and, and being promoted into into new roles to, to fill uh, the void. Uh, what's the the way forward in, in your eyes? Well, as I said to David last night, I don't particularly care what the way forward is. I know that's my joke for the night. Um, <laughs> no, look, we we we've had some some really terrific conversations. You know, and, and let's be serious for a couple of minutes. Um, I, I think at the start of uh, this discussion tonight, you know, we we want to make sure people are, are crystal clear about one thing, and this is not a uh, a facade or, or something, uh, some sort of story we're trying to concoct here. Um, we're going to uh, have organised a smooth transition from from me exiting from this role. Um, my aim uh, and and the discussions we've had today is that uh, I will join um, our advisory board um, and and work on uh, a, a number of projects that are either in train at the moment or or any new projects that will support the club. Um, I'm happy to, to mentor and support any of the, uh, the executive committee. Um, I'm even happy to give Louis tips uh, about football now because I can. Um, uh, previously, I sort of didn't interfere too much. Um, so uh, it, it's you know let, let's be crystal clear. This this not should be this will be a smooth transition. Um, David uh, has obviously accepted um, uh, the mantle and the baton to uh, to take on the, the president's role. Uh, and I know um, uh, you know everyone will support him in that uh, in that capacity. Um, he's uh, you know he's someone clearly who I trust, uh, the committee trusts. And uh, as I said earlier, we've got a terrific group of executive committee members who are 
um, genuinely committed and uh, and supportive of, uh, of what we're all doing. Um, you know, we we formulated a, a second five-year plan in 2020 as a group. That's not my plan. It's not Dave's plan. As a group, we formulated a plan, and and we'll stick to that plan. There's no need to deviate from that plan. Um, we'll look to secure promotion again this year. Um, now, on my preference is uh, the championship, but uh, uh, I'll leave that with Dave to massage that with Louis, um, and uh, and then onwards and upwards. And you know, our our work will, will not stop. And you know, I'm I'm so looking forward to as I was talking to a couple of our supporters last night. As you can see, that uh, the construct of the uh, the brand new pavilion going up and, and going up so quickly, um, I'm so looking forward to to turning up uh, to a game, uh, whether it be game or training, coming and having some dinner there, having a couple of quiet drinks, whether whether it be you know watching a, a Euros, uh, the next Euros uh, in that facility, um, you know cheering for whoever we want to cheer for, uh, you know hopefully it's Macedonia uh, then again. Um, but really enjoying um, an environment where you can sit down as a family, you can sit down with your colleagues and friends and, um, and spend some quality time together over a meal and, and over a couple of required drinks. Um, that, that facility is something that we've, uh, we've really lacked and, and, and it's something that's really the cornerstone of many clubs. As I say, that social aspect is, uh, mm. is fund fundamentally important to, to the culture of a football club. Um, so. There's, there's going to be plenty for me to do, as, as I say, um, uh, and I said in my statement today, um, I have no intention from walking away from the club. We've, we've all invested too much time and effort and energy in, uh, in what we've uh, delivered to date, and we're going to continue to deliver, um, whether it be infrastructure, whether it be uh, improved products uh, for, for our kids. Um, you know, we'll push for a, a junior boys NPR license for, for next season. Um, there's clearly the ongoing conversations of national second division. So I'll do whatever it takes to support the team um, to deliver on the, on that strategy. So it's the John Farnham style farewell tour. We're not <laughs> getting rid of you that easy. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's very good. You've been worded up well by Dave. Yeah, I'm Farnsey and he's Barnsey. Um, <laughs> That's it. <laughs> um, look, uh, this is... Uh, as I said to a couple of people last night, this is the uh, the end of uh, phase one of a of a journey. Um, we're all on collectively. Um, I, I want uh, and and in part of what I wrote to our sponsors uh, today, uh, you know, just to thank them for their wonderful support over many years. Um, but I, uh, I I really want them to continue to commit and support the club because they can see where we're going. Um, they can see the positivity around the club, and you know, despite the fact uh, you know we we've got a change in. Uh, you know the uh, the person uh, in, in the uh, president's seat. Um, we uh, we're going to maintain that stability, which is fundamentally important to to the successful running of any football club. Well, Zach, you're not getting away uh, that easy on this show either. You're going to stick around as my co-host for the rest of the hour. Very happy to, mate. Very happy to. That might be one of the things they uh, they put me into longer term. Dave tells me. <laughs> but no, very happy Absolutely. to. Thank you. Well, we'll find plenty for you to do. And uh, you're not slipping away tonight either. We've got a huge show coming up. We're going to take a break now. But on the other side, we're going to speak to Captain Rob Naumoski. And we've got a new signing waiting in the wings, a high-profile acquisition for the women's team, which continues to go from strength to strength. Olivia Edwards, who's got plenty of experience at a very, very high level in MPL. She's a new signing for the women's squad. So she's going to be joining us later in the program as well. Stay tuned here on The Lion's Den. Electrical Connectivity Australia is a leader in the electrical industry and specialises in matters of a domestic, commercial and industrial nature. Please contact Igor Georgievsky for any of your electrical needs on 03 9333 0433 or visit www.ecapl.com. Genus Steel offer full-service structural steel to leading industrial and residential builders across all metropolitan Melbourne and regional areas of Victoria. At Genus Steel, we take pride in our product, service and reputation. With over 40 years industry experience, Genus Steel manages all aspects of steel fabrication from on-site measuring, in-house drafting, fabrication through to full-site installation. We work closely with our customers to deliver innovative solutions to facilitate projects of any size. For further information, please contact genussteel.com.au or contact the company on 03 9465 1287. 
house designer living specialise in architectural design and construction of new homes, unit developments, extensions, renovations and commercial buildings. They are located at 14 to 19 Enterprise Drive, Bundura and can be contacted on 03 94 67 6954. MS Designer Living. Genesis Steel offer full-service structural steel to leading industrial and residential builders across all metropolitan Melbourne and regional areas of Victoria. At Genesis Steel, we take pride in our product, service and reputation. With over 40 years industry experience, Genesis Steel manages all aspects of steel fabrication from on-site measuring, in-house drafting, fabrication through to full-site installation. We work closely with our customers to deliver innovative solutions to facilitate projects of any size. For further information, please contact genesteel.com.au or contact the company on 03-9465-1287. Electrical Connectivity Australia is a leader in the electrical industry and specialises in matters of a domestic, commercial and industrial nature. Please contact Igor Georgievsky for any of your electrical needs on 03 933 0433 or visit www.ecapl.com. Buying your electricity from the big energy companies is now the most expensive way to power your home. In fact, the average electricity bill in Australia has more than doubled in the last 15 years. But not for the ones who went solar. Unlike your electricity bill, the power of solar has actually come down and there's also government rebates available. So what are you waiting for? Join the 2 million households already saving hundreds of dollars every year. See how much your roof could be making you at solarpowerco.com.au. Go solar and get $500 cash back with the Solar Power Co, Australia's most trusted Trusted solar brand, solarpowerco.com.au. You're listening to the Lions Den on FNR Football Nation Radio. And we are back here on the Lions Den, the official Preston Lions Club show, coming to you live over Zoom this week. I'm up in Canberra. Um, f- apologies for that, but uh, I will be back in time for uh, for the next away game stream. And we've got Rob Nowmoski, the club captain, joining us now. Rob, how are you? Good evening, Josh. I'm good. Thank you. Yourself? Yeah, I'm good, mate. And we've still got Zach Gruevsky sticking around for the rest of the show as well. Uh, let's talk about the weekend, mate. Uh, up in Epping Stadium against a victory side that uh, seemed to lift for you guys specifically. There seemed to be a little bit of extra motivation on, on their part. Yeah, I mean, it, look, it's not just victory. I think it's everyone that wants to play Preston. Yep. They get that feeling of we, we want to be the best because um, we are the best. So... For us, every week it's a, it's a challenge, and um, we're up for it. We have the, the quality to, you know, uh, perform week in week out. Um, look, the weekend and I guess the week before, and I guess the few weeks before that. Um, I think we just we're just developing a new sense of of feelings because we're not sort of used to um, the results that have come our way in the last couple of weeks, but. Look, um, it happens to to the best of us, and um, rest assured, you know we we've regrouped and trained hard, and um, yeah, we'll be ready for for tomorrow. Yeah, a couple of hiccups over the the past couple of games. What's what's the response been like from from the playing group and and Louis in regards to this little dip? Um, I think it's just, um, especially from Louis, it, it's, it's just to keep our, our motivation and, and determination up. Um, that's all we can do. I mean, if, if we're determined and when we're committed, um, you know, throughout trainings and when we're, we're pushing hard, um, the rest will follow. So, look, although we, we wanted to go undefeated for the, you know, throughout the whole season and, and claim, you know, the, the uh, invincibles, I guess uh, one small sort of hiccup can be, um, can be fixed. And I think credit to the boys, um, we, we've started to lift our training sessions again uh, to the intensity it needs to be. 
Um, and I think personally, I see it in myself. I can see it in, in, in the boys as well. That um, we don't like losing. We're, we're no we're no losers here. We're we're a winning team and, and a winning club. So for us, we we have been a little bit down in the results, but again, it, it's not going to impact um, us moving forwards. And um, I think yeah, it starts again tomorrow with uh, with a positive result. I felt the playing group actually responded pretty well to the red card. I mean, if anything, uh, you know, the team kind of kicked into gear after that saying, gee, like we're up against it now. And the second half performance was, was uh, quite um, stirring. Really. You guys were absolutely yeah. spent. I saw, I was commentating from right next to the players race. I saw you guys walk off and you're all completely spent after the 90 minutes. Was it uh, pleasing under those circumstances to, to come away with a point at least? Yeah, it, it was. Um, and I think it's, look, sometimes we, we can see a goal or, or a red card has to happen for for us to, to step up a, a gear, um, which sometimes is a little bit unfortunate. But considering the, the situation that we're in, um, playing 40-odd minutes with, with a man down, I think we, we had the discipline and enough experience to... To continue to play our football, um, to remain, as I, as I mentioned, disciplined, and to at least get the get the point um, away from home. So, although it's uh, not the result that we wanted, um, look, it's it's better than than nothing, I guess. And what about you uh, stepping into the leadership role that you've occupied this season? You know, like, what, how are you feeling about your your own performances and and the captain's armband as well? Um, Look, as I mentioned previously, and when, when I was appointed, it's just uh, just a privilege. I guess that's the the best word I can I can put towards um, describing the, my, my feeling. It's a the privilege to be able to, I guess, be nominated um, from my peers and the committee members and staff members um, to represent such a big club like Preston. So for me. Um, has it impacted my performance? Oh, I'm not sure. You know, I, I try to play my own game regardless. Um, I like to see myself as a leader, regardless of the armband or not. Um, so I just, uh, yeah, I'm very grateful to, to be a part of Wine the Leadership Group, but just, just to be able to, you know, wear, wear the shirt in prides and, and wear my heart on my sleeve and try and get out there and, and, and do what's, what's right for myself, the boys in the club. Oh, Rob, you're very used to the atmosphere in the men's changing room. Zach, uh, less so uh, when you entered the other night. Yeah, that was last night, um, Josh. Um, it was uh, it was a little bit odd because I generally don't go into the change rooms uh, too often at all. I think uh, we were talking with Louis after after training last night. He said, I think you've probably been in here uh, four or five times uh, in that five-year period that I've been here. So um, how did... Uh, what did the boys think we were coming in for, Rob? Look, a lot like you mentioned, you, you don't often come in um, really into the into the change room. So I think we we sort of looked at each other and thought, oh, you know, is, is this is going to be a crisis meeting? Um, which, look, to be fair, is is not a bad thing. Um, and, and crisis meeting, I don't know, probably not not the right terminology for it, but. I just, um, well, I guess the, the boys maybe thought that it was a little bit more serious in terms of um, our results and just to be reassured that, um, you know, where we want the club to be heading and where it is heading. Um, but, yeah, as as uh, mentioned to you previously, it was uh, I think it was more of a shock, the fact that you, know, you announced um, you stepping down. So, um, yeah, we are obviously saddened by that and obviously just touching on, um, I guess I can speak on, on, on behalf of the players as well. Um, we'd obviously like to wish you all the best um, in your future endeavours. Uh, we want to thank you for everything that you've done on and off the fields. I know we don't really see the, the off field part of things, but I know you and, and the rest of the committee members work extremely hard for, for us players to, to get what we, what we want when we want it and, and to, be, um, to be able to perform um, week in, week out. So um, I guess the club's in a good position and it's, it's good to know that although you are, um, uh, you know, stepping down and going on the sidelines a little bit, it's, it's good that um, we have somebody else that's um, got the same, I guess, goals and objectives as yourself and the rest of the committee um, to bring the club to where it needs to be and where it is heading um, in the future. So, again, thank you for, for your support. Um, you'll be missed, but at least yeah, you'll, be, you'll still be there at the game. So that's good. And, um, yeah, I wish Dave all the best.
Yeah, no, thank you, Rob. Um, very kind of you, and, and thank you on behalf of obviously the playing group. I mean, I think as uh, as Dave and I uh, both said uh, at the end of our address last night, um, and I won't use the expletives, but uh, boys just get the job done on Friday, and we'll all be happy. That's and uh, you know, and I know uh, clearly the the playing group, the coaches uh, are working extremely hard to uh, to try and deliver a result for us on um, on Friday night and beyond. Um, you know, we've got a terrific group of uh, boys. Um, who uh, you know have gelled extremely well, and um, we're we're extremely proud that uh, they represent uh, our club uh, in the way that they do. So um, keep up the uh, the good work, and um, as we said sort of before we came on tonight, for us it's a little hiccup. Um, you know, we we might have experienced a couple of things like this in 2019 from memory, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, we moved forward very quickly after that, and. We all know what happened, uh, having secured a, a championship um, after uh, after 12 years. So, um, best of luck to uh, obviously to the coaching staff and, and the boys um, uh, tomorrow night. I was planning to have a bit of a holiday, but uh, um, I'm told I, I should uh, should do the right thing and attend uh, attend the game. Yeah, uh, you, uh, you you won't have me not uh, not attending, mate. I'm looking forward to it. Good, thank you. Appreciate it. And um, yeah, I think we're up for it for tomorrow. Well, let's talk about tomorrow night then. No other place to be on a Friday than, uh, than Jenna Steel Stadium on match day against Nutter Wadding, who's a team that, that likes to play a bit of football, uh, which isn't always the case. Uh, and all the opponents who sometimes set up shop uh, coming away from home to, to play Preston. Um, how are you uh, shaping up for this one? What's the preparations been like? And what are you expecting to see from, from the opposition? Uh, yeah, uh, like, like mentioned earlier, I think every team's out to get us and considering we, um, I guess, beat most oppositions, they're, they're looking to get some revenge on us. So I think we've made a few tweaks, um, considering the, um, obviously a few changes and injuries and, you know, suspensions and whatnot. So I think we've made tweaks um, in our squads and uh, maybe formation, but uh, I think we're up for, for a battle. Look, it's not... It's never easy. We, you know, we, I'm not going to say we're never under pressure. I think every week for us is, is a bit of pressure, but at home, it's it's our den, it's our wine's den. So you know, as a, as a, as a minimum, we we need to secure three points, regardless of how we do it. Um, we owe it to ourselves, to the fans, and to the club. So um, regardless of what they do, we will play our game. We will do what we know um, to do best, and. Uh, yeah, we'll make sure we'll come away with the chocolates. You got some uh, incoming players as well as so a bit of a boost to the, the midfield creativity, like, like he's back from suspension. And I understand Pooley's getting himself right as well. That's it, yeah. So uh, Lockie's back from suspension and uh, and Pooley. It's, it's good to see Pooley's um, back fit and ready to go. He's been a, a big miss in, in our... I guess overall squads um, with his creativity and his experience that he has. So it'll be good to see those boys back into the into the squads, and um, yeah, hopefully we can we can get that result. Well, it's good to see Paulie fit again because I thought he was going to have to transition to full time broadcaster the <laughs> last few weeks. But um, what a frightening thought that is! <laughs> it'll be after my job. Uh, but Rob, best of luck for tomorrow night. Thank you for coming on the program. And um, yeah, we look forward to seeing everybody in action and everybody attending in big numbers at, uh, at Jenna Steel Stadium tomorrow night. Thank you. Thanks for having me again. Thank you, Rob. All right. so, yeah, bye. That's Rob Namoski, the captain of the Preston Lions, joining us here on the Lions Den. We're going to take another break. And on the other side, it's time for the women's program. And Olivia Edwards is an exciting new signing coming from MPLW. So we're looking forward to chatting to her about her playing history and what drew her to the club. This is the Lions Den. Electrical Connectivity Australia is a leader in the electrical industry and specialises in matters of a domestic, commercial and industrial nature. Please contact Igor Georgievsky for any of your electrical needs on 03 9333 0433 or visit www.ecapl.com. 
Genus Steel offer full service structural steel to leading industrial and residential builders across all metropolitan Melbourne and regional areas of Victoria. At Genus Steel, we take pride in our product, service and reputation. With over 40 years industry experience, Genus Steel manages all aspects of steel fabrication from on-site measuring, in-house drafting, fabrication through to full site installation. We work closely with our customers to deliver innovative solutions to facilitate projects of any size. For further information, please contact genussteel.com.au or contact the company on 03 9465 1287. MS Designer Living specialise in architectural design and construction of new homes, unit developments, extensions, renovations and commercial buildings. They are located at 14 to 19 Enterprise Drive, Bundura and can be contacted on 03 94 67 6954. MS Designer Living. Electrical Connectivity Australia is a leader in the electrical industry and specialises in matters of a domestic, commercial and industrial nature. Please contact Igor Georgievsky for any of your electrical needs on 03 9333 0433 or visit www.ecapl.com. Genus Steel offer full service structural steel to leading industrial and residential builders across all metropolitan Melbourne and regional areas of Victoria. At Genus Steel, we take pride in our product, service and reputation. With over 40 years industry experience, Genus Steel manages all aspects of steel fabrication from on-site measuring, in-house drafting, fabrication through to full site installation. We work closely with our customers to deliver innovative solutions to facilitate projects of any size. For further information, please contact genussteel.com.au or contact the company on 03 9465 1287. MS Designer Living specialise in architectural design and construction of new homes, unit developments, extensions, renovations and commercial buildings. They are located at 14 to 19 Enterprise Drive, Bundura and can be contacted on 03 94 67 6954. MS Designer Living. You're listening to The Lion's Den on FNR Football Nation Radio. And we're back for the final time this evening here on The Lion's Den. We're delighted to be joined by a new signing for the women's uh, program, Olivia Edwards. Welcome to The Lion's Den and more importantly, welcome to Preston. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm super excited to um, be on this and obviously just be at the club in general. It's, yeah, exciting times. So we were covering a little bit during the break uh, how you finally uh, persuaded to join Dan Fodden and uh, and join Preston as it happens. Uh, he's mm -hmm. been trying to sign you for a little while, we understand. Yeah, hunting me down for a couple of years. I think, you know, persistence pays off, I guess. Very convincing. Um, you know, it's, it's yeah, been a while and we've stayed in contact and he's always so supportive whether, you know, and even with this this decision as well, you know, he saw that I wasn't necessarily getting as much game as I deserved and um, pretty much said, you know, I want you to be happy. So if it's wherever, but he just wanted to really help, yeah, get me going and get me back into football and enjoying it, especially after the year off last year. So, yeah, convincing words from Dan to get me along. And you've gone straight into the first team, bit of a whirlwind from your signing right to match day on the weekend and a couple of wins to to, to uh, show for it as well. Yeah, it's been a, been a really good start and the girls have really shown me what they can um, put in and, and provide as well. So I think it's, yeah, I've sort of really merged in really well with the team, even though it's only been two games and a handful of training sessions. So yeah, it's looking good so far. So with the new players that the supporters haven't met yet, we like to do uh, a bit of a deep dive, rewind. So if mm -hmm. you could cast your mind back, I'm, I'm told you you're from Tassie. When did you start playing football? 
Yeah, I couldn't even tell you an exact date. Um, not that I'd give you an exact date, but um, a <laughs> year or anything. My, I'm very, very lucky. My dad is actually a really, really amazing football coach. He is currently up in Townsville running a um, high-performance program up there for, for football final of Queensland. Um, so it's kind of been football's been a part of my, my blood for as long as I can remember. So I honestly don't remember a day that there wasn't football for me. And yeah, exactly. Tassie is where it all started. I was in high performance programs from a, from a youth age, um, got to a point where it just, I just wasn't progressing down there, sort of finished school and just thought, you know what, I'm going to make a jump to Melbourne and figure out life after that. But football was the main priority. So yeah, actually moved here to pursue football. So how did uh, how did Melbourne welcome you? Who did you play for? What was uh, your experience like moving interstate to, to pursue it? Yeah, it's it's always a you know a really difficult time when you are moving away from family friends. I pretty much moved only knowing one person. Uh, so my first club was actually um, Bandura. Uh, and then from there sort of shifted to Berlin and that's where I've pretty much spent the majority of my time ever since. Um, little stints at Ashburton, Alamein and then back to Berlin. Um, so yeah, it, it was a, it's been hard in terms of, you know, moving away from friends and family, but very, very quick. The football community is always absolutely fabulous. So, you know, I've made lifelong friends now and yeah, wouldn't, I don't regret a single second, wouldn't take anything back. It seems as if all the, the Tassie footballers seem to know each other. There's like a little network yeah. here in Victoria. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. We, we, we really do, you know, with sort of little messages to each other every now and then like, yeah, go Tassie. Um, you know, we're sort of pr- quietly proud supporters of each other. <laughs> so you spoke about your dad. He was, a, he was a player back in the day as well. Yeah, he he definitely was. I have no idea what he's going to kill me for this. I don't know what level he played at, but I know he was damn good. And he tells me about all the great headers and crosses and all the good yards he did put in back in the day. But um, yeah, absolutely. He definitely played and has always and still, you know, tries to get on the pitch when his hamstrings let him. Um, But yeah, mainly coaching is is the way that he is now. And yeah, he's a full-time coach and yeah. So I've got a message from from Dave Fedkovsky here. He said uh, that his dad played with and against your dad. Yeah, so I, I, I yeah I know dad played at a, a pretty high sort of you know um, nas- nationwide sort of level and played all over the place. So yes, it's funny enough you know everyone from Tassie, even if I haven't met them, they're like, oh, I know your dad. You're you're Mike Edwards's daughter, aren't you? Or, you know, even over here, I'll run into places, even if just walking out to get a coffee somewhere when dad's visiting and, um, yeah, he'll somehow know someone on on, <laughs> on the street and I'm just like, what's going on? So, yeah, he's he's pretty great. Can't, can't say a bad word about him. So is he still coaching you from afar up in Townsville or does he leave you to it these days? <laughs> no, we're always on the phone every after every game <laughs> before, probably twice a week while I'm going to training, always on that phone, always having video calls, phone calls, um, you know, watching the live because MPL was, or every game was live stream. So he was always on there and I'd get straight on the phone afterwards. Oh, this happened. Oh, um, what can I do better? So I, yeah, as love all the other coaching lessons I've got from all these other coaches that I've, I've had the you know opportunity to be with, but no one beats dad's coaching. <laughs> That's it. So, Talk, us, talk to us a little bit about Bulleen and, and MPLW. It's, it's a pretty successful club. It's a pretty high level, pretty competitive environment. Yeah, it, it really is. And, and this year, look, they've completely stepped it up a notch even more. They've got so, so many incredible girls, the facilities and just the support from the club itself is, you know, 12 out of 10 amazing. I, you know, love the Monday night home games at the Ven. It's, it's a great place to be, a good environment. And they really focus on the women's program as well. Obviously, you know, they've got a very competitive men's program, but I think the girls have done so well in back-to-back years to get promoted from lower leagues and have just always gone on and won championships, won cups and really pushed and contested and always been in those top tiers. So it is, it really, honestly, it was fabulous to be at such a, a great supporting club and of high-quality players as well, just being around those groups, group of girls, 
and majority of them has actually been there since I was there and even before. So, um, you know, coming through with the retention that they are able to keep there is just an absolute uh, weapon to have when they do progress each year. Yeah, we often joke, um, you know, that amongst the commentators who do some of the MPLW games that um, ironically, Bulleen seems to have the best centre-back in Australia still playing for them. <laughs> <laughs> so, and Gayla Morrison, yeah, who's finally getting a incredible. W League gig victory. So, I know. Uh, it's, she it's definitely amazing. deserves it. She's an absolute superstar. <laughs> So coming to Preston, what are your first impressions of, of the club and, and what, what do you think the club needs to do with the women's program to, to get to where Bulleen are? Yeah, look, I think, you know, it definitely has the foundations there. The the club's definitely heading in, in more than the right direction and I think they've proved that with their men's program already. Um, you know, the women's program, even from, you know, what I've heard are starting to get a lot more respect because um, they are getting the results and, you know, the club is really looking forward to progressing them as much and, you know, hoping they are going to be successful as, as the men's programs. Um, in terms of what, what could be done, I think, you know, it had... And I think they've, you know, already started hopefully, you know, with myself and another great signing, Rachel from um, Bayside, you know, you get a couple of those quality players to, you know, give the girls a taste of what, what could be, what it is like. And, you know, hopefully we do make that jump this year. And that definitely is the goal to get up to the MPL standard. Um, it does take that next level of commitment. I think no matter what I've done year after year, February to September, October, that's football season. There's, I'm not going anywhere. I am training all the time, you know, trying to do the right things and and sort of taking up that notch is, is always really important and just putting in every single session and, and seeing every session as an opportunity. Um, but, yeah, like I said, I think the girls have definitely proven that to me in, in, in the first couple of weeks that I've been there and I've been very, very impressed by where they're at and I'm just looking to help take them a little bit further and, and keep pushing and probably bring, I think, a bit of a bit of wisdom and a bit of a calm head to the to this this league and yeah hopefully you know 200 percent we're pushing for that title we don't want to be number two we want to be number one this year so um yeah it's look it's looking really positive which is exciting oh we're lucky enough to have outgoing president zach Gorevsky on the call as well zach you can probably uh speak to uh the the longer term ambitions for the for the women's program and, and the kind of change in in club philosophy that's that's gone along with that over the past you know decade or so yeah look um, thanks josh i mean i think um uh, i wouldn't perhaps say that the the past decade you know i think in recent years obviously again similar to the men's program with the appointments um of some terrific co coaches in in recent years and and dan um the enigma that we uh, that we call um his you know his his enthusiasm and his passion for the game and his his knowledge of of the game in this in this state is just absolutely superb and uh, we absolutely love him um and clearly uh, he's been able to attract uh, some wonderful players uh, you know uh, like uh, olivia to the club um you know we haven't uh, hidden our ambitions uh, like we uh, we've spoken about with the men's program um similarly with the the women's program uh, we clearly uh, would like the girls to uh, to progress up and um it, it's it's probably uh, looking like uh, if we continue on the way we are um, our women's program will be uh, in the top tier of Victorian football ahead of our men's program, and uh, that'll be superb for our club. And uh, we obviously wish uh, the girls every success. Uh, they've had a fantastic start to the season. Um, watching the game against Altham uh, last uh, last Friday, um, I said to uh, to a couple of people I was sitting with, um, the one thing that uh, that I've noticed, um, you know, Altham was always a bit of a bogey side for us. Uh, we'd really struggle against them, and uh, we clearly had their measure with, uh, you know, with a four-nil win um, uh, on on Friday night. So it was it was really pleasing to see, uh, you know, the tables turning a bit, and um, and the excitement around the the, the club and, and the playing group is uh, is fantastic. We perhaps um, didn't quite meet uh, on on the best of footings uh, last night when I went in to uh, to uh, announce the news of my uh, stepping down. <laughs> That was probably the first time I came across Olivia, so uh, Olivia, my apologies for that. Um, but um, you know, we, uh, as I say, we're really thrilled with uh, with the progress that uh, a women's program uh, has has made, um, and we're looking forward to uh, to greater success. and And that uh, that hopefully starts with this uh, this weekend's uh, game. A little bit of a segue for you, uh, Josh, to do your job um, to uh, to kick it off. Um, on Sunday against Burundara, we're, we're really looking forward to uh, the top of the table clash. 
which um, which is really exciting. My new co-host, an absolute natural. <laughs> Give me segues, tear me up. It's, it's going well. New role for Zach. Fantastic. Um, so, Liv, uh, tell us a little bit more about the the win over Eltham first. Uh, 4-0 was pretty emphatic. Uh, we have a running gag here that everybody who comes on the show ends up scoring, and Hayley Mercedes continued the streak with uh, with two goals in the first half, whereas uh, Rachel did the business in the second. Mm-hmm. Look, I'm happy with that. Let, let's fingers crossed. That's how it ends this weekend. Um, let's not make it one. Let's make it two or three. Um, <laughs> that would be amazing, especially, you know, coming out against such a such a strong team on the weekend. So, yeah, I'll, I'll take that. I'll, you know, I'll make it happen. You heard nice. it here first. <laughs> Ambitious. I mean, you, tell us about your, uh, your playing style. You're a, a left back. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Left back. Um, it's, and it's sort of very uncommon for a, you know, naturally right footed player to, to want to be on that left side. And I think, you know, dad did push me in that direction straight up saying women miss a left foot. They just don't have it. If you can get a left foot as well, um, you're going to be 10 steps ahead of everyone. So I think that's an absolute weapon for me is that I do have a left foot. Um, as well as obviously my natural right. So, yeah, I think my style, I'm a very, you know, physical, aggressive player and um, love getting in the thick of it all. So you will see me wander up quite a bit towards the wing and, you know, sometimes we'll even play there. So, um, yeah, love being on the ball, love having a physical presence and, um, yeah, trying to keep a cool head at all times. So you've got options there with both feet. You can cut out, cut inside, have a crack from yeah. uh, from distance. Yeah, and that's it. absolutely what I love to do as well. Fantastic. So uh, you know, it might not be too big an ask in, in the end there to get, get on the score sheet. Tell us about the game coming up this weekend. Yeah, I think, um, you know, Burundara, we're playing at Darabin on Sunday night and it's going to be a big one. Um, it's quite funny. Everyone's like, oh, no, artificial pitch. And I'm like, yes, coming from Berlin and, <laughs> and the Ven, I am thrilled to be back on artificial grass. And, um, yeah, it's going to be a big one. There's lots of players in the opposition team that I have played with over my time in um, Victoria in the NPL. So there's a couple of absolute superstars there. But, um the girls have shown me that they, they've got it. They've got they've got the fight in them. And, um, you know, whether it is going to be a grinding out sort of match or whether, fingers crossed, we're on top and, you know, we really do show what we've got, um, that would be, you know, the best outcome for us. But it's going yeah, to be a tough one. It's going to be a grind um, out there, I reckon. But, um, yeah, as you said, hopefully there's one, maybe two in the bag for me and we get it done. Yeah, it's quality opposition you're coming up against. It's going to be maybe the match of the season. Is it first v second? Am I right there? Uh, yeah, we have a game in hand, I believe, sure. as well. So, um, yeah, it's getting close. And, yeah, I definitely think us and Burundara and myself and Whitehorse as well, be, oh, I say myself, Preston, and Whitehorse as well, I do have a lot, a lot of close friends in that team who, and um, Teo said it on the, the Bullying's broadcast the other day mm-hmm. at that pretty much it's old Bullying girls. Um, so I'm looking forward to maybe, you know, sticking out a leg, shoulder, hip here or there as well to um, make that a really good battle. So that'll be an entertaining one. But I think this is, you know, this weekend will be where the points are really come, it comes down to. So Sunday at Darabin, make sure you yeah. get down there, support the women's team who are pushing really hard for promotion. Olivia Edwards, thank you so much for joining us here on the Lions Den. Welcome to the club. It's a pleasure to have you on board and uh, yeah, stick one in the back of the net for us this weekend. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. It's been an absolute pleasure and I'm looking forward to the rest of the season. Thanks for joining us. Edwards, our new signing for the women's team coming in at left back. Cannot wait to see more of her in action. And Zach, before we go, just finally, mate, I mean, the tributes have been rolling in for you in the comments Mm -hmm. all show. Just a massive thank you for all the time you've always given me and and this show and even more so for your role at the club in in transforming it over these these past years. Your your role is, is not entirely done you're staying on as a mentor and and the you know the, the plan will continue you know in your absence but uh just a massive massive thank you and, and huge gratitude coming in for all the supporters and and me as well thank you josh much appreciated mate it's great to be on the, the program again always happy to uh to come and talk about preston mate uh, it's it's something we all love and are extremely passionate about and will continue to be so so thank you very much thanks olivia and um thanks for your uh 
um, uh, time management again, Josh. Well done. <laughs> always <laughs> going overboard on this show, but there's always too much to talk about. Uh, we'll leave it there. We'll sign off. Thanks to everybody for tuning in tonight. Get down tomorrow uh, to support uh, the men as they play against uh, quality opposition in Nata Wadding in their chase for promotion and the women on Sunday. Uh, we'll speak to you again next week on the Lions Den. Preston. Electrical Connectivity Australia is a leader in the electrical industry and specialises in matters of a domestic, commercial and industrial nature. Please contact Igor Georgievsky for any of your electrical needs on 03 933 0433 or visit www.ecapl.com. Electrical Connectivity Australia is a leader in the electrical industry and specialises in matters of a domestic, commercial and industrial nature. Please contact Igor Georgievsky for any of your electrical needs on 03 933 0433 or visit www.ecapl.com. listening to the state of our football nation on FNR. The things you learn. Uh, no Joshua Parrish, but we do have Lockie Flanagan in the studio. Uh, George Danikian and Lockie, uh, we're, we're doing it via Facebook Live, is that correct? 
We are? Well, more, more than just that, George. Well, bring Fe- me up to speed okay. because I'm so okay, behind because, the because, times Because here. we are well and truly, I mean, we always have been, but even more so <laughs> than before, we are a multi-platform entity. We're streaming it. live on Jesus. Facebook. Multi- Platform Mul- entity. Multi- I'm buying this. Multi- I'm buying- See, I, well, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad you're picking up what I'm putting down. Uh, we are on Twitch. Yep. We are on YouTube. Fantastic. We are, are on Facebook, as you mentioned. Excellent. And of course, all the other pod- podcast platforms, Spotify. Well, Apple the podcasts, tall, the tall, good-looking good one is um, Lockie. Uh, I thought the his name older, was George. The older, the older guys. Yours truly, wearing his Paris Saint Germain. By the way, um, the Parisian crew have just bought themselves a pretty special player on a free. I yes. call Sergio Ramos. What do you make of that? I mean, it, it's quite, it's a funny one for me. Obviously, I, I think it's a good pickup. Uh, Sergio Ramos has quite a personality. He has. I think that either works extremely well or extremely yep. poorly moving yep. into the cast of characters. I think characters it's a very PSG. interesting observation. Uh, welcome to State of Our Football Nation on FNR. Um, we are going to talk football over the next hour or so. And importantly, we're going to touch on the FFA Cup, which this year takes on a slightly different hue because Lockie, Channel 10 will be picking up and showcasing much of the tournament and there'll be a standalone final. Yeah, and I hey, think... Hey, how exciting is that? It's it's very, very Free exciting. To wear. And I, I, I'm always eager to see new football content. Yes, and, always. And, more spe- and in this case, more specifically, how it's packaged, what does it look like? Would it be fair to say that you've been impressed by the move from Foxtel original coverage mm-hmm. of the Premier League and so on to the Optus contract where you s- we've seen a whole crop of new faces, some older faces, fr- who had made original moves at Foxtel and got their start there. What, did you, what have you made of that transition? I think Optus have done a particularly good job, especially uh, of late. They've picked up an awful lot more programming and content, which is terrific. Um, and we're seeing, uh, you know, that lovely interplay between the people they have in Europe. Uh, we're seeing Adriano, of course, Del Monte, uh, who yes. did so much work for us at FNR in the early days. And we've, we're seeing uh, Schwarzer and others, of course, in London uh, playing some of those big games. And, of course, they have their headquarters in Sydney where they run uh, any number of um, international uh, football stars of the past and present. And mm-hmm. we saw... Uh, Sorensen, the former um, Danish international, uh, uh, sitting alongside an old an old football colleague of his, Michael Bridges. Did you enjoy that little byplay? Yeah, I did. I did. I mean, I think what Optus have been doing generally this tournament has been really, really impressive. It, it so, is so almost now, around the clock. So now the question uh, is, can the new platform, which it will will be launching in August? either the early part of the late or the late part, depending. We're still waiting to hear. My original uh, uh, understanding was it would be August 22, but we're hearing it now may be August 12, and I'm talking about the uh, new Paramount Plus platform, which will be the streaming platform that 10 uses or CBS Viacom is using through its 10 affiliate here. And then, of course, every Saturday night will be football night on the 10 network across Australia. That'll be free to air, and more importantly, there will be programming uh, r- wrapped around it, which is very exciting. And, we, and we've already seen some A League talent ending up on some interesting shows. We, we saw Tom Glover rock up and appear on uh, one of the ten programs. Um, who was there? Were a couple of others. Archie's already made a, a, yes, an entrance, I has. think. Uh, so there are a few opportunities now, and we're seeing this lovely way that. Commercial television can do so much more than it has done in the past. The AFL, of course, notorious. Seven, the Seven Network, the Ten Network, the Nine Network in the past have wrapped themselves around uh, a whole bunch of AFL talent and rugby league talent. And, of course, the, when they've had uh, the basketball, uh, 9-2 has used its, its foray into that particular sport to promote many of the stars and, again, introduce them into a host of different programs on the Nine Network. And we've even seen it now with its Ten Cup... Sorry, its um, its um, Davis Cup and... Uh, not so much Davis Cup, what am I saying? Um, its coverage of the tennis, the Australian yeah, the Open. Um, so it's been very interesting. We've had the tennis, we've had Wimbledon on. Then we've had the, the, the second-to-last game, the penultimate game of the Euros... 
Okay, let's go back and uh, re- take a good stock of what what you've what you've made of this tournament. What are your thoughts? We're one game away from the final. Again, it'll be Wembley. It's coming up about four o'clock. Is it Monday morning? Yeah, it is Monday morning. Okay, and there is so that's uh, four o'clock Eastern Eastern uh, Standard Time or yep. uh, or Sydney time or Melbourne time. So four o'clock. Now, will Italy be a little fresher? Will England be a little fresher because of the rotations that Southgate has been using. Um, and what did you make of the game this morning? Well, before before we get into this morning's game, I want to say that <laughs> it will be at 5 o'clock in the morning and I think the queue outside Ligon Street to get a space to watch that game is already forming. Yeah, uh, no, that's, I, a very I, good, that's a very good comment. I so know that what uh, you're saying to me is if, we, if I want a coffee, I'll have to get to the front of the queue early. So if I was thinking of getting up at 4, it might have to be 3.30, is that what you're saying? Yeah, well, I, I would go even further than that, George, just okay. to be safe. I have a... Well, tentative- the last time I had to rock up at Ligon Street was with Red Simons <laughs> when we did the ABC breakfast program during the 2006 World Cup when Australia started its campaign and we were covering uh, yeah, wow. the breakfast uh, program on the ABC and we were, of course, uh, in that unique and almost twilight zone where you're not a rights holder, <laughs> so you compromise. You can't really talk too much about the game, but you can talk you around can talk the game. You talk around it. Yeah. It's fun. 